No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> Sorry, I'm to it. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> 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 Mike. Here we go, man. It's not mine. It's not mine. So, Yabu. Father, we thank you that we can gather today in your name. We say that Jesus is the name above every other name. We say thank you, God, that you are the father of our country. 
that you have given us freedom. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us a rich history, that you've given us a nation that is full of color and joy. God, we praise you that you are present in our midst, and we pray for order, we pray for your direction, we pray for your spirit's discernment, wisdom for the honorable members on the stage, and we pray, God, that we will all keep our eyes focused on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, ta, I can start. Hey, ta. Hey, ta. What? I can start. I can start for the season. We are here. I won't say. I'm going to say. I'm going to say. Amanda! 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 All right. Uh, on a lighter note, let us um, greet you. Uh, my name is Bongiwe Mpingo Kikaba. I am from the National Assembly, I'm the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee. It's nice to be here. Um, in the don't we have chairs? Don't we have more chairs? We don't have... Okay. No, we can't use the ones um, in the middle. There are about chairs here. There are about chairs just next to you. Are you having people? There are also chairs there. Can you please wait? If there is an empty chair... Next to you, just raise your hand so that people can get chairs to sit. Let's try to get more people sitting and few people standing if it's possible. About chairs here, yeah. please just allow someone to sit next to you. If there, if those chairs, oh, okay. I'm told that there is an arrangement of more chairs to come. They are, all, they are coming. But if you don't have a chair, please just stay put. They are bringing more chairs. But there is still, there, for those who don't have chairs, there is still about two hands. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, at least we've tried, we have tried, we have tried, we have tried. What is happening at the center? What is happening here? No, but can we, can we get them back again and wait for the chairs that are coming? Um, anyway, Ma, can I, can I, um, my apologies, um, can I, can I kindly request you to go back because there are people that cannot see us where you are standing. I'm kindly requesting you to, to take, um, You guys must help us there. Thank you. Just more, few more minutes. Chairs are coming. No, but we don't have chairs. Do we have chairs here?
All right. At this point, I'm going to ask um, our speaker, Councillor Neyman, to do the, the welcoming for us. Good afternoon. Sorry. I obviously don't need a microphone too much. On behalf of the George Municipality, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank every single one of you, and especially the um, parliamentary officials, for making the time to come here today. For those of you that have taken the time, especially the public, I think today, more so than any other bill, shows the importance by your turnout, because today we are discussing our future more than anything else. Education is the future of our country, and without a decent education, we have no future. And the mere fact that this hall is full from front to back shows that you really care about our future. So from our side, I'm really saying, going to say to you, thank you very much for that. I would also like to take a few seconds just to say to you that the whole process of what is taking place here today is the fundamental building blocks of our constitution, where the public has the opportunity to have their input. And we can never allow our country to be put into a position where we become dictated to. And I think this today is the first step in saying to the public that your voices will be heard. So please, today is your opportunity. But the same invite goes throughout all spheres of government, whether it's national, provincial, or local government. When you get the opportunity to have public participation, take that opportunity. Because no longer can we have the minority talking for the majority. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Speaker. Thank you very much. We've had these public hearings throughout the country. This is the seventh province. We have met people, many. We have filled halls. We have made sure people feel free to speak what they want to speak. And the same thing is going to happen here. So we don't need to instigate people. And this bill, it's the people's bill. So you don't, you don't get to politicize it. You don't get to politicize it. I'm going to allow members here on the stage to introduce themselves. Um, Goedemiddag, mensen van Pakkelsdorp, George. Goedemiddag. Ja. Mijn naam is Marina van Seil en ik kom me van die Oostkamp af. Um, ik is een lid van die parlement. Um, ik dien op basis van onderwijs en comité. En is mij baie goed om te zien vanmiddag die opkomst is ons speaker gesê het. Dit bewijs allemaal is passievol voor ons onderwijssysteem. So, baie dank jy dat allemaal uitgekom het en um, in die kouwe, dank jy jylle. My naam is Marina van Seil, ek is van die Oostkaap. Baie dank jy dat jylle... Oh. I'm very glad for the turnout that we have today and welcome here. Molweni nong ee kamalam di nguma mo van Seil di soka. Good 
Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Goedemiddag. Moloeni. My name is Bakoli Le Nodada. Many of you may have come across me. My name is Bex. I'm a member of parliament serving in the National Assembly. I am elected to this very important committee and parliament by the Democratic Alliance and this lacquer on your TV is in the VSCAF. Goedemiddag. Goedemiddag, VSCAPenaars. Mijn naam is Marie Soekers. Ik is baie blij jylle zie so vandag. En ek sien uit om na alles te luister en ek is of course van die ICDP. I'm Maury Sukers from the ACDP. Uh, welcome all here, and I'm Sukers, as I said, and welcome from the Western Cape. Good afternoon to you and everyone. My name is Ronnie. My father's name is Murat Tseta. A member of the National Assembly in Cape Town, deployed by the African National Congress. And upon arrival, I was further deployed into this all important portfolio committee on basic education by the Chief Whip of the majority part, Mama Kemi Majodin. And my home is in Limpopo. Zanin is my town. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Or oh, maybe you want me to say hallelujah. <laughs> Uh, my name is uh, Honorable Bafuze Yabo. I'm a member of uh, Parliament in the sixth administration. I'm from Gauteng. I serve in the Portfolio Committee on Basic Education. And on the continent of Africa, the African National Congress. Thank you very much. That's all I know. Good day. <laughs> uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tebo Khodizie. I am a member of the Sixth Parliament, serving in the Portfolio Committee on Basic Education. I come from Gauteng, and I'm deployed to Parliament by the biggest organization in South Africa, the ANC. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Siabonga. Now, without wasting time, I'm going to call somebody from DPE to outline for us the bill. Where are your hotels? Honorable members, honorable speaker, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, I'm James Ndlebe. I'm the chief director from the Department of Basic Education. We are the people behind the bill. We are the people that are making proposals, which we send to parliament so that Parliament can, if approved, make amendments to the South African Schools Act. You will remember that the South African Schools Act was enacted in 1986, 
and from 1986 to date, there have been a lot of changes in the country, and some of them are not captured in the South African Schools Act, and we may not be able to implement any if it's not in the Act. Now, the South African Schools Act, including the bills that, that, that we are recommending, will only focus on issues around administration and management of schools. So you're not going to find the curriculum issues there because curriculums are captured somewhere. You're not going to find anything around the infrastructure because there are norms and standards of infrastructure. You're not going to find anything around extracurricular activities or even inclusive education. These are covered elsewhere, but the Bella Bill focuses on the administration of schools. And these are changes that we thought are necessary. There are about 56 of them. And out of the 56, we have come to realize that not all the 56 clauses uh, are challenged, but there are specific ones that people have an interest on, which we believe maybe we need to clarify some of them. So when you go through the Bella Bill, which I believe it is in your hand, you'll realize that for us, the most important thing is the inclusion of grade R into the schooling system. Grade R has not been part of the schooling system, and we can only do that by asking Parliament to pass a law that allows great R to be part and parcel of the school system so that we can be able to fund it, so that we can be able to hire teachers and pay them, and the teachers belong to the system and they get into Pesan. It cannot happen unless the bill gets passed and that issue of great R then gets included then. When you go through the bill, you realize issues such as the code of conduct of learners which begins to strengthen the code of conduct because of all the social ills that are happening in schools. You know, there's a lot of abuse in schools. There's a lot of gangsterism and all those, but schools are unable to handle this mishap unless we strengthen the bill and give authority to those who deal with misconduct and defy what serious misconduct is, we may not be able to deal with all the violence that are happening in school. The Bella Bill will have issues around corporal punishment. It has been abolished even in SASA, but SASA didn't go further to indicate the clear definition of what corporal punishment is. It only stops at physical abuse of, by teachers to learners, but it doesn't go deeper in indicating other issues that you may classify as corporal punishment. So it's not just the hitting of a child, but there are a lot of definitions that we have, we have added in the Bella Bill to make it more understandable. There, there has been challenges that when communities have issues with whoever, which authority, government, that communities tend to close schools unlawfully. Sometimes it might be a small governing body that has issues maybe with the principal. When they strike, the first thing they do is to close schools. We want to put it as an act, an issue that that should be, be punishable by law. We're saying the disruption of schools needs to come to an end. And those who disrupt schools knowingly then they need to face the, arm of the, the might of the law and they may be arrested and be liable for a fine or even imprisonment. So this has not been in the act at all from the beginning. Some of the things that you're going to find in the act are, are, are issues that, that affect the functioning of SGBs. There has been a law that allows communities in the SGB to second and nominate other members of the SGBs that are not parents to come and assist the school if they have skills to do that. We want to put it in the law that a school be given the authority and the power to even include other skillful people around the community to come and assist the SGB in its own functioning. The, the current SASA doesn't allow for 
schools of specializations. We're beginning to see more and more schools that are specializing in various areas like aviation and all that. And the SGBs of those schools have not been defined in the Act. We're beginning to say, should a school want to move towards a particular direction, this is how the SGB needs to be structured in order to deal with those issues. So those are some of the changes that you're going to find in, in, in your Bella Bill. You're going to find also issues around the finances of schools. The changes in the finances of the school is that the current SASA allows the SGB to report to the department about its financial issues only at the end of the year. And the latest date is the 30th of, of June. Now we're beginning to say, when you report at the end of the year, a lot goes on in between which goes undetected. So we're requesting that we be given the right, the authority to ask schools to give us their financial records, their expenditures on a quarterly basis. So that should there be misuse of funds somewhere, we're able to detect them in time and not wait for the end of the year. So that is what you're going to find in the bill. We're also asking in, in the bill that the heads of department must be given the authority to investigate all financial mismanagement and irregularities in school, should there be some doubt that there is mismanagement in school. The Bella Bill also contains ways in which small and non-viable schools can be rationalized. We're talking about the major enclosure of schools that are considered to be non-viable. These are found in SASA, but there are no steps on what must happen should a school found to be non-viable. So this bill is beginning to list those steps, what must happen, how must the consultation happen until the last step when there is an agreement that the school needs to be merged or closed. So you're going to find that in, in this new Bella Bill. There's a very controversial one that I've seen even papers circulating around, that is the issue of alcohol in schools. I think currently in the Western Cape, there is a law that allows for the sales of alcohol in schools. But, but what, what we were putting in the bill is that it is happening, but it is not controlled and regulated. So if it is happening and it continues as a fundraising measure, there needs to be a way in which the department together with the school can make sure how it happens, how it's managed so that it gets controlled. It's not a section that says schools are going to open Shebins and Spaza shop and start selling alcohol, but it's saying when there are activities where parents are involved, parents might be given an opportunity to have a space where they may be able to consume alcohol in a controlled situation. So that's how this comes into the act, not opening up for everybody. When you go on with the bill, it also talks about allowance of uh, what, what you call central procurement of goods. What it means is that schools can group th themselves together and purchase learning, teaching material in bulk together Sometimes the department might get involved and I work with the governing bodies to make those bulk purchases because it's about economic of scales. It's not there in Sasa and it cannot be allowed unless it is in the bill and the bill gets, gets, gets approved. When you move on with the bill, it starts to focus on issues like language policy, admission policies of schools. Currently, the language policy and the admission policy are in the hands of the SGB. Now, what the bill is proposing is that the language policy and the admission policy still remains in the hands of the SGB, with the rider that should those policies not be in line with other regulations and the constitutions of the country, the HOD needs to be allowed to engage with the SGBs and make a ruling out of that. It's a matter of a language policy and an vision policy, which if it's found to be discriminatory and excluding other learners, then the HOD needs to come and engage with the SGB and make a ruling out of it. So those are the changes that you're going to find in, in the Bella Bill. The Bella Bill also acknowledges 
the right of those parents who want to homeschool their children. The Bella Bill says continue homeschooling the children, but the request in the Bella Bill is may you please register. May you make the department aware that your child is not going to a public or an independent school, but will be homeschooled. And as you inform the department and you register, as time goes on, use your own curriculum, use whatever. At the end, may we get a, an independent assessor, somebody outside the department who may be appointed to check whether the child is progressing, there is education that is going on in the school. And it then mentions steps in which should be followed should you decide to homeschool a child. So those are the most controversial issues, 56 of them. And we asking parliament to look at the 56, where there are changes in certain clauses, parliament will debate and agree from your input, in fact, whether this should proceed. And that is what we're presenting as the department. Thank you very much. No, thank you very much. Uh, I am informed that there are um, chiefs that are standing, and I apologize from probably the Khoisan communities. Our country is a very diverse community, and um, they are apparently not allowed to stand. So I see there are about two chairs here, and if there are people that can assist to get those chairs to to them, and there is a third one also there. Um, so if chiefs would want to sit, um, there is availability of chairs, and we do sincerely apologize that you had to, you had to stand. All right. Now, that's, that's Bella Bill from um, the Department of Basic Education. So what we are going to do, we are going to give you now an opportunity to speak on the bill. And as you are going to be speaking on the bill, I want to first indicate that we've got an option of writing if you don't feel comfortable by speaking, you can write. And there are forms, there is a lady at the back with the black t-shirt on that table. For those who don't feel comfortable um, speaking, you can get the forms from here. And then on the forms, we do have a space for your name, uh, your contact details, and then you, you, tell, you, you tell us. I must say up front that we do not accept forms that come from you because we have brought our own forms from Parliament. So you must use those forms if you want your voice um, to be heard. Each speaker is going to have three minutes to speak. When that three minutes um, ends, we are, we are stopping you from speaking. Many people where we have been, they are using English to speak because it's a language that is understood by many of us. But, we want people to feel free to speak their own language. There are interpreters here. And they are going to do the honors and interpret if you want to speak. I'm not sure if they are koi, koi san <laughs> orientated. Um, they, but of course, uh, the language that you feel free to speak, we encourage people to to use the language they are going to speak. I'm going to note now 10 hands from this side. From this side. This side. And 
We ask you to sit where you are. We are going to rotate and uh, allow uh, people to, to, to speak. One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, both of you, seven, eight, Nine, ten. I'm coming back. You wait. We are coming. You tell us your name, who you are, when you start to speak, and you tell us whether you support or you reject the bill. And then... Uh, You tell us your story, if you want us to hear your story. We are here to, to listen to yourselves. You can start, madam. Thanks. Hi, I'm Anneri Gronier, and I oppose the bill, especially clause 37. Chair committee members and fellow citizens, the aim of education is not to prepare children for an institution or to be the possession of the state. The main purpose of education is to cultivate a soul of a child, to provide the opportunity for a child that is individually unique, to acquire knowledge, develop the power of reasoning and skills that will enable the child to develop their full potential and become a successful member of society, mature in life and to add value to the economy of the country. If that is the aim of education, I should be the, it should be the prerogative of parent to decide the way of which education will be the best of each child. Children are the gift from God, and he gave my children to me. It is my responsibility and human right to nurture, nourish, and cultivate their unique and different souls according to my values. It is not the state's choice to regulate and enforce education. It is the parent's prerogative to deal that responsibility to the state and not the state to enforce or regulate how it should look like. Me and my husband choose a classical education approach. Our aims and outcomes are compar compatible to not compatible to CAPS. The classical approach does not focus on a child to regurgitate information, but that our children to be trained in virtue and develop skills in logic, rhetoric, grammar, research, reasoning, and debate. This will enable them to master any content and will allow for depth of knowledge to settle, resulting in children not being confused no matter their level of processing skills. Children need time to consolidate concepts, not just come, but with repetition. The parents should have the choice to choose which curriculum will develop the specific knowledge, reasoning and skills acquired for mature life. I'm a parent of three uniquely different gifted children. With different forms of intelligence, a one-size-fits-all approach will fault them. The state cannot enforce parents to be the specific, to a specific curriculum which dictate content, learning outcomes, and a way it should be assessed. The state cannot enforce CAPS compliancy. I'm a qualified teacher that taught CAPS in public schools for 10 years. I realized that CAPS was curriculum together with its context, learning outcomes, and way it assesses the child. Does not give room for difference in our children, receive, process, and apply their knowledge. CAPS are predicted on academic abilities. CAPS does not make room for children with different interests, gifts, intellect, and capabilities. All are assessed under one umbrella. CAPS also does not make room for different skills and innovation, 
to development. Therefore, caps faults, my children. Your time Because is up, ma'am. Thank you. Kubandis bulisele kumalungu wepala menda beke kileyo. Ika malamdi nguzukile, zukile, Albert Rorwana. Can you, can you allow him to finish and then you... All right. Ika malamdi nguzukile, Albert Rorwana, and my plate in the pain. Ogo kala mangane ndichi, I'm not supporting the pill, and he supports the pill. One... Inda ba yoku ba taku fundraise wa yoku nige kubeku kutengi swa wiki wala is pulling and the support is not good at all. Two, kuna ba zali abafundi sa abandwa na nge mali zabo is puma epoku twin. So mendi kela si itatele ingalelo i employment abu ba ndu taku nige bebe ba ya keswa ba be ba ya keswa ma ba recognize we and the support yoku ba ba be ba zu recognize we. Three, sine challenge, okanye sine ngagi is kuluin. Kuyaliwa, ku abuse what is ala, gabandwa na beskolo, isi zatu, kwa ye ka ubefa is kuluin. Kuna bandwa na, mbikwente lumis again, a plate in the pain, kwa nuk tula primary, a paka nisane primary, sorry. Kuna bandwa na aba nini, aba plita otisal, a primary. Oti shala bataki wa pikuwa sabandwa na abadetwa eskulwe na abafumani pa punishment. Kwa yeka ukdetwa eskulwe. So lando eya nzege eskulwe ni iya ipumele kwi communities. Ufumansa yi fight iya kondinyuwa iya kubeke. Kina indoba akakeshwe eskulwe ni kwa kwa yeka ukdetwa eskulwe. Lepe la pila pil andi iva iteta gens toilet esinge koyo eskulwe. Abandwa na eskulwe ni kukwa na Eastern Cape. Kukona apa bandwa na bewela besia eskulen bewela ili nduka umlambo kunge kwa zi preach. And iva ile lepil ikininisa ngoputuko le mfundo la bandwa na. So I'm not supporting this bill. It's wrong at all. Ogo kibela gestan. Bengala malungu wepala mende. When the singena. Ndi no tek. Kwi embul. Kwi 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 le nduka zenu. The Mbekwana Iloko ANC. It's not right what was happening here in that bell. Because I believe Nize Apa Kavmendali, and then we know ANC much will read. But we are not all of us were ANC. So please, Chairman Committee, you must apologize about that. Pena Ibine Embry ANC. No, 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 no. Let's deal with it now. Where have you seen the emblem of the ANC? I'm not talking to you. One of, the, one of the member, the official member of the parliament. What is, what I, is emblem? Have you seen him wearing ANC things? No, it was the logo of the, the, the ANC. And then he, down, they write in parliament. And then one of the officials, he took it out. It's totally wrong. Oh, okay. All right. I'm informed that it was outside, they took it, it's, it's gone now. Who put it at me? I'm from parliament, do you want me to apologize for ANC things? He was what? He was what? No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not. I will not. I'm not going to do it. So, 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 you, um, we... In a emble, in a loco, ANC, in a very nom called... Did you... Nibonil, Yasus. Did you wrong? It's only... It's fine. It's only... Thank you. I'm not going to apologize for that. I will never. I did not put an emblem of the ANC outside. And here, I represent parliament. You can't take me there. Not going to do it.
Politics will come to. The ground will go to next year. Can we have an interpretation first? Thank you. Children are proposing the teachers, and there is no punishment that is being implemented on the children. And the bill, there are no toilets at school. No education, proper needs are being considered. Therefore, he does not, in short, support the bill. And he has also stressed about the ANC locker being available here outside. And that is the matter that had been addressed so far by the chair lady. Honourable Chair, Honourable Members, Fellow Citizens, South Africa. I'm Nolan Loxton, a home educating parent. I reject the Bella Bill and specifically Clause 37, the Home Education Deterrent Bill, on the following grounds. One, it is unconstitutional and usurping parents' rights. It violates the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which states, parents have a prior right to choose the kind of education that shall be given to their children. Usurping parents' God-given right and constitutional right to decide what is the best interest of the child. It is the parents and the privilege, it is the rights and the parents of the, of the privilege of the parents to care for their children physically, training their minds and nourishing their souls, imparting their values and preparing them for adulthood. Why should parents ask permission to do what is their right? Notification, not application to home educate as reasonably. Secondly, home visits are an invasion of privacy for both the child and the family. Children are vulnerable. Their home is their sanctuary, a safe place that should be protected and not intruded on without strong reason to believe he or she is at risk of harm. A visit to a neutral office space for an interview or affidavit from a pastor should be considered as alternatives. Three. The bill infringes on religious freedom and the right to educate within a worldview other than the state's approved secular worldview. Restricting the curriculum free, curricular freedom restricts religious freedom. Parents, not the state, have the right to impart their values to children. No government may use education and our, our children to achieve their agenda. Fourth, vague language leave all vulnerable to the minister of basic education, creating whatever regulation he or she wants without any democratic input. Five, no meaningful research was done and little engagement with the home education sector before trying to legislate it. We must seek understanding first before we attempt to regulate. I respectfully request you to remove clause 37, uphold our constitution and show both parents and children that you truly care about the future of South Africa. I thank you for considering my input. Honorable Chair, Honorable Members, and fellow citizens of South Africa, I'm Tina Loxton and a home educating parent. I reject the Bala Bill and specifically Clause 37. It is not in the best interest of the children of South Africa. Currently, the benefits of home education are available to all families, irrespective of income. The bill will make it impossible for lower income families to access this. Children that struggle in mainstream schools will be denied an education that could help them flourish and grow into productive adults because you allow laws to pass to make it financially inaccessible deterring committed parents from taking responsibility for their children's education. Home education should be encouraged. 
It offers viable, cost-effective solutions to the DPE's own challenges such as overcrowded classes and serving special needs children. Home educators are resourceful and generous with sharing their practical, affordable, tested solutions to economic, educational challenges. The DPE could make use of this innovation. All South African children can benefit. Home education is not schooling. It should not be regulated through a schools act. Home education is not linear. Learning is not restricted to a schoolroom or certain hours of the day, and often the whole family is involved. We teach when we rise up in the morning, sit down at a family meal, walk or lie down. We teach our children how to think, not what to think, to read with purpose, to love learning and to apply everything they learn to their daily life. It's not merely a transfer, transfer of information from one mind to another, but rather an internalization of what is true, good and beautiful. It is focused on developing the whole child and flexible to adapt to a child's specific needs, gifts, interests and the rate of progress in different areas. Parents can select from a wide range of methodologies and curriculums prepared by experts for delivery by the parent. Parents, not a state official, is best equipped to monitor the child's progress. Ask the parent to provide an annual plan, a progress report of skills mastered and a portfolio of work. If you will afford me a personal example, our daughter of seven is flourishing, writing and illustrating stories, incorporating all her studies and drawing talent to make storybooks for a four-year-old friend to teach her Latin. All in her free time, not assigned but us. Even at this young age, we see her apply all she's learning from different subjects into a productive outcome to serve others and help others. She aspires to be a writer and illustrator. Home education allows her to develop the skills to achieve this goal, potentially even before leaving school. Every hour dedicated to preparing for CAPS assessments will take time away from developing her skills and interests. Frustrating and burdening the children with busy work with no clear objective or benefit other than making administration for the DBE easier. I respectfully ask you to remove Clause 37 and engage with the home education sector before attempting to regulate. Thank you for considering my input. Good afternoon, honorary members, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Carmen Horsen and I'm a concerned homeschooling parent that unfortunately cannot agree with the amendments that the Bella Bill oppose proposes and the principles behind them, because we as parents have been given the responsibility by God to educate our children. As a parent, we acknowledge the effort that the government wants to put in to alleviate deep-rooted societal problems, but as a South African parent, I have to protect my child's constitutional rights concerning religion, curriculum, and also to preserve their ethical and moral well-being. I hope that the end result of this effort will be in the best interest of all our children. If the Bella Bill is changed to serve the purpose of building up our children to become the pillars that carry our nation, to build a country, a blessed country, where our children and their children can thrive, then we as parents will support it. May God bless you and I thank you for this opportunity. Hi. Yeah, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Nicholas Horsen, a concerned homeschool parent from Neisner. Thank you for the opportunity to oppose the Bella Bill in its entirety. This bill pouts a thin veil of concern for our children, but it really seeks to grant unprecedented power to the Department of Education. Through centralization, this bill dismantles the vital checks and balances that safeguard our schools. It blatantly strips away the authority of the school governing boards 
regulating them to mere spectators in the decision-making process like it does in Section 5. Section 21 allows the DOE to dictate the centralized procurement of school supplies, which paves the way for corruption and further diminishes the transparency that we so gravely lack in government procurement already. Perhaps the most alarming is Section 25, which gives the HOD authority to dissolve SGBs at a whim, completely extinguishing the voice of parents. It doesn't end there, though. This bill normalizes surveillance and control. Section 4A authorizes the hunting down of truants. It disregards the potential impact on vulnerable students who might be facing circumstances beyond their control. Section 51 encroaches on the rights of parents to choose the path best suited for their children. Section 43 subjects volunteer SGB members to unnecessarily invasive audits, which I believe is cunningly added to breed an atmosphere of distrust among them. Furthermore, Section 20 grants the DOE the audacity to commandeer school facilities, and should any school dare to challenge this encroachment, Section 33 conveniently empowers members of the Executive Council to arbitrarily close schools down. We must recognize the dangerous trajectory that this bill sets us on. The, out, the overreach of authority and the centralization of control are telltale signs of fascism creeping into our country. Do not be complacent about that. The path to a better education system lies not in the concentration of power, but in empowering local communities. So heed these words from Nelson Mandela. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. But he understood the transformative power of education. To him it was a beacon of hope, not a tool for societal control. Buckle up, it will be a bumpy ride. Buckle up, it will be a bumpy ride. Kai Gangs, I am King Dr. Neville Korkia from the Bakiti Koi in the Southern Cape. My Ekan Afrikaans, Prat, and my English and my Afrikaans at all. Ek, of my Daxedi Bakiti Koi, reject. Want die geschiedenis van ons het al 1452 begin. Waar staan dat in die geschiedenisboeken? Nergens. Die, die kooi's gaan het die Portugese uitgedreef met stokken, met klippen, zonder wapens. Waar staan dat? Hoe kan ons die bil support? Waar is Kretua? Waar is Kretua? Ze is nergens te zien. Ons hoor niks van haar. Hulle het eerder sissel John Rhodes. Ze graf, ze kus boop haar graf gaan sit. Want hulle wil jou hier geschiedenis doodmaak. Wat de vrouw so saartje paard man. Waar is sy? Jylle teken haar so lelijk soos jylle wil. Maar kom ik zeggen, jullie een prostituut was nog nooit lelijk. Hier. En een kooi zijn een heel lelijke mensen. Jullie hebben van haar een prostituut gemaakt. Waar staan dat? Hoe kom praat jullie niet dat? Ha? Neisna. We praten van Neisna. Neisna zijn naam is Neis. Niet Neisna niet. Neis. George Rex. Met zijn travanten. Het koning Nijs uit Nijs naar het gedrijf. Tot rechtse minderlijn is en Nijs aan die maas. Een graf van hem daar. Waar komt je het aan? Die geschiedenis moet herschreven worden. Zelf hebben we posa. Dan wil je daar zitten met die, die geschiedenis herschreven worden. Kijk een pensula. Daar had mijn voorvader daar geblijven. Hulle het huise gebouw daar. Hulle het, hulle het huise gebouw daar. 
Hulle het beendere gekryd daar. Hoekom het hulle nie beendere? Toe, as het by een ander nasie was, het hulle in midde gestop, maar dit moet hy so kort val het. Hulle die bouwer het aangegaan. Kijk hoe slim was die vorige government. Hulle het ons een vier voortanne getrek, wat ons nie maar die team moet maak nie. Ons het gedink as een moeder, maar hulle het ons getrek, want ons het taal begin met die. Dis waar ons het taal begin. Waar is die kooi taal? Amasse. Amasse. Dankie. Your time is up, pap. Yes. So sombrero. I'm so... What's that? That white man was paying your ear. Is he that way? Your time is up, Dad. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Amase. I don't know what it means, but Amase. I like it. What does it mean? We are together. Huh? Agreed. Yes, Amasemos. Amase. No, but I really think I I really think you Okay. This bill is very emotional. That's what I've said. We need to laugh a lot. It's very emotional. So really he's done nothing. He didn't even speak to me. I'm defending him. So please um, proceed. Ah, man, sorry. Um, interpretation. Apologies. We just need interpretation. My name is King Neville. I am the interpreter, sorry. My name is King Neville and I'm from Nisna. I just want to say you must buckle up. You must all buckle up now. I am from the Bakiti Koi, from the Southern Cape. And the Bakiti Koi rejects this bill. Our history started already in the 1400s, 1452. Where is that in the history books? Where have you written that? The Koi were chased away. The people were chased away. Why is it not written up? Why is that not in the history books? Where is Kratua? Who wrote up her story? Where is she? She's not in the history books. What happened to her? Cecil John Rhodes, he wants to kill our society. He wanted to chase us away. But you changed the history. Sarki Bartman, you can draw her as ugly as you want. You made her a prostitute. A prostitute is never an ugly thing, ever. Never, you can draw her the way you like. Our Sarki, you prostitute her. She's not ugly. Nisna, it's Nisna. George Rex, he drove the kings out of Nisna. That was a king, King Nice. George Rex was the, in his horrible people, they chased us away. Where did you get all these history things? You go back to Cyril Ramaphosa and you ask him, where's our history? That is not written up. Amase. I also want to say, that I'm from Pizula, that the people from Pizula, the colored people, our forefathers built homes there. Why? We were chased away because we are the so-called colored people? The last thing I want to say, not that I want to say before I was actually stopped, but they pulled our four front teeth, four of them. Why? So that we are not able to make a click sound. That's why they pulled them. I'm not finished yet. That man on the gentleman stopped me, but I've got to go now. Okay, thank you, thank you, our interpreter. Nature does not allow any vacuum. The next speaker, your three minutes. Thank you. Afternoon, uh, Honorable Chair, Parliament members and South Africans. My name is Bronwyn and I'm a homeschooler in uh, Plettenberg Bay. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to share my thoughts on the Bella Bill. Firstly, I would like to reject this bill as I feel it doesn't have my children and their children one day's best interest at heart. There are quite a few things that my family and I object to, but due to time, I'm just going to share a few points. 
Firstly, I would like to reject Section 37, as I feel it takes the freedom to choose the best curriculum and style of learning experience away from my children, including values and teachings that we believe are needed in society today. It is our constitutional right as parents to make sure that our children are kept safe and have a good quality education, and we feel we can do that best if we get to choose what and how they learn making the decisions for our children that we feel is best for them, as who else knows our children better than we do. It is also a God-given constitutional right to protect the innocence and purity of our children where we can. As the Constitution states, we have the freedom of religion, thought, belief, and opinion. Our faith and learning at home gives us the opportunity to make sure that, we believe, or that what we believe is protected and our children aren't exposed to things that we feel are inappropriate for their age. This clause isn't based on enough research and input or involvement from the homeschooling community, and our understanding of the rules and regulations haven't been explained clearly enough for us to feel comfortable with how it will be implemented, especially with having assessments and visits in our homes. I'd also like to reject clause 47 regarding learner pregnancies. How can you feel that it is right for a child at the age of 12 to receive contraceptives, have pregnancies and abortions without any parental involvement, awareness or consent, and make that law? How can teachers have the right to do and allow these things to happen over a parent? What I feel this demonstrates is that it is part of an ongoing marginalization of parents and family, whereby parents are seen as not good enough or important enough to make decisions for our own children. To end, I'd like to share wise words from a religious leader called Harold B. Lee. The most important work you will ever do will be within the walls of your own home. Thank you. Good afternoon, honourable chair and members. I res uh, sorry, my name is Lisa. I respectfully object to the proposed amendments to home education contained in the Bella Bill. My story will be a personal one. Our home education journey started when our first son was born. Since that day, we have been educating him in fundamental areas of life, obedience, morals, respect, honour, values and authority. This type of education is constant and ongoing. By the time we reach school going age, we have long since decided to take on the enormous responsibility of furthering his education at home. We did research on the plethora of curriculum available. Moving through the foundation phase of his academic education, his sister soon followed, surprising us by earlier abilities to perform the basic functions of reading, writing, and arithmetic. The third sibling came along to show the same early capabilities. Due to our daily involvement in every detail with regards to their academics, we could identify this and expand on it before they were at the standard age for specific grade level. All three of our children process language and math problems very differently. Because I am aware of this, I can specifically supplement each child with additional resources. I need to stress the fact that I know exactly in what subject areas they are progressing, as well as the areas in where they, where they need attention. The attention that they then receive will thus be individual and specifically curated, curated for each of them. Why appoint an external assessor that will need to firstly invade the privacy of our home in order to secondly assess my children who are already being assessed effectively and appropriately on a daily basis. Our children are being taught new and relevant information daily by the person that loves them the most. The knowledge that they build up are being applied in everyday life. They get excited about science, history, music, art, geography, and quality literature. Books are an integral part of their curriculum. All three of them have both heard and read hundreds of books, imprinting in their minds vocabulary, facts, and images. All of this is possible only because we, as their parents, have the freedom to responsibly choose 
the best suitable curriculum, as well as allowing time for reading, playing and sports. The freedom of us as parents to make decisions that affect the education of our cho own children should not be taken from us. The moment homeschooling parents become limited to a national curriculum, or any one curriculum for that matter, would be the moment we take our children's minds and limit it as well. The wings that they have been learned to use will be clipped. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair, Parliament, and uh, protocol observed. Baie uh, dankie vir die geleentheid, en dankie ook dat u ons vandag te woord staan na so veel jare dat ons die geleentheid vir oogend het om daarna ook ons inse, insa te lewe rondom die Bella Bella Wil Wil. Uh, Achtig, uh, klusiele 2 verwees na graad Ers. En dit is voor ons inwoners daar in Kanderland Arie, een bron van kommer die wijze hoe lang hulle moet vat voor die opleiding bij graad Ers. Ons probleem ook is dat die plaatselijke scholen meerderheid van hulle is gesluit in die plaatselijke Aries. Ons vraag is, wat wordt van die kinders wat daar en die plaatselijke Aries het. Rede daarvoor is ook, hulle moet dan naar hoorskole toe gaan, en dan is een baie kinder wat baie jong is wat school toe gaan, en die kost is gewoon, en die kost is, is baie hoog. Die, ons vraag ook, wat word dan van die schoolverlaters? Want die, die schoolverlaters, as die ouders nie dit kan bijbrengen, nie, dan is het een hele klomp dropouts, wat die misdaad hoogst druk in die areas. En dit betekent dit is ook misdaad. Ons praat van die herschineringsplan van die plaatselijke municipaliteiten, wat ook ten hoogste is, als ons praat van thuisverzorgings. Wat is die criteria daar rondom? Die tenders bij schoolen. Waarom kan dit nie ook net plaatselijk geadverteerd worden? Ons het met CIB, registraties voor ons contracters, wat ook ten voordele dan kan wees vir die huis houdelike gebruik. Alcoholverbruik by skole en baie meer daarvan staan ons geen sinds toe nie. Herem Tje, ons moet ons kinders na oudsoring toe neem, na die college toe. Die beerse wat gegeven word met die kinders 4 tot 5 Mane vat voor hulle kan geld kry. Ons as ouders het het nie so breed nie. En dit alles het een probleem daarby aangesluit by tieners swangerskap op ons skole. Is daar een plan daarvoor? En waarom kan daar nie meer bevondsing na ons skole toe kom vir huis uh, tuine by ons skole nie? Baie dankie vir sy. Sorry pa, as jy het ons vir, vir ons gesê, support hy of support hy nie. No, he did not. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I don't support the bill. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. We want that. Madam Chair, all protocols followed. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming to us today. My name is Jonathan Yankees, and I thank you again for the opportunity that you came to us after all these years, so many years, to come and speak to us and to ask our input with regards to this bill. Specifically, I want to refer now to Clause 2 of the bill that states that Grade R will now be compulsory. In Kanaland, that is a huge concern for us because the local schools will have to close down and then we'll have to take our children to hostels and schools in bigger areas and that would be very expensive. 
We also have a huge problem with scholars leaving school earlier than they, than they should. This will lead to crime, and we cannot afford that. The rezoning of municipalities is also a problem for us. We also want to know why tenders is not given to us locally. Why can't we also have be a part of that process? Madam Chair, our kids have to be taken to Oatsorn, to the college there. That college is extremely expensive, and the bursaries take too long to come through. They wait for a too long period before those bursaries are awarded. Lastly, I also want to mention teen pregnancies. What can we do about that? That is a problem that also needs funding and to look into. And lastly, I was called back. I just want to say that I do not support the bill. Thank you. All right, now I'm coming this side. Uh, I'm noting hands. One. I said one. Two. Three. Four. Is it going to speak? Are you coming to speak? No, no, no. Satu, red, yes. Young men, come, go. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. The child. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. A com. The chairs are full. We're going to come back. <laughs> you can start, Mamiyes. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. I'm Erica Brown. I'm a councillor and I represent the, um, the DA and um, introduce or raise our concerns uh, with the bill. First is about the language and admission policies. The Bella Bill will remove the powers of school governing bodies to make decisions about language and admissions policy for their schools. The Bella Bill would be used to target mother tongue education especially Afrikaans schools as a scapegoat for the ANC government who has failed to build enough schools that will provide quality education. The constitution protects the right to mother tongue education where this is reasonable, practicable. D the DA strongly defends and seeks to extend that right where parents wish to exercise it, whether it be Afrikaans, Isikosa or Venda. Schools and communities must keep the power to decide what's best for their children. The department should only intervene if there is evidence that a school is using a language policy to discriminate against learners. The Bella Bill gives the department the opportunity to centralize and abuse its powers and to discriminate against learners, to undermine the right to mother tongue education. While the DA supports proper admission appeals mechanisms, we reject the notion that school governing bodies are forced to appeal to, to heads of education departments against unfair or damaging policies imposed upon schools by those heads of department. Department being a player and a referee. The document needs to register learners are excessive. 
the High Court found that schools should not exclude children if they did not have all the documents, documentation required. The Bella Bill undermines this right. With regards to the curbing of school governing body powers, DA believes that communities know the needs of their schools better than politicians. The Bella Bill undermines communities and seek to centralize power in education departments. With the Bella Bill, the minister can decide how many members a school governing body of a school with special needs may have and how they are chosen. The head of a department can use the Bella Bill to dissolve the SGB and the school will only have two weeks to appeal. The, with regards to homeschooling, the department did not gather enough information from the homeschooling sector before writing regulations for it. The available regulations will not ensure quality education through homeschooling and ignores the unique challenges of this sector. The notable exclusions are, uh, the first one is online and the blended learning. The available does not regulate online and blended learning. Your time is up, ma'am. That good. <laughs> yes, it is. Good afternoon, honourable members of Parliament. Thank you for taking the time to come and hear what us, the public, who have placed you there to represent us, have got to say about the available. We appreciate you. And I also just want to mention that I truly value each and every parent and everybody else that's come out here today to come and make their voice known about the available. We open these hearings by acknowledging God and his sovereignty. Let us continue in that attitude when considering this bill. I'm Jeanette Khos. I'm a grandmother to three beautiful grandchildren, one of which is 12 years old this year. Her name is Elizabeth. She's precious to us, as, each, as is each of your children and grandchildren to you. She is also our joy, and we take responsibility for her in every way. We feed her, clothe her, house her, and impart our values and beliefs to her. We are teaching her that human beings are created in the image of God, and that human life is precious. And for that reason, this clause 41 that amends section 61 of the South African Schools Act is of great concern to us. The Department of Basic Education's policy on the prevention and management of learner pregnancy states that its purpose is to provide sexual reproductive health services to learners as young as 12. Read political speak for abortion. This can be done secretly. This can be done without parents or guardians knowing. This can be done without the consent of parents and even against the wishes of parents. This is outrageous. It's a total infringement and transgression of parental rights. I have three questions for the spokespeople of the Department of the Basic Education because they are claiming that this is not an abortion bill. Question one. Does the policy on the prevention and management of learner pregnancy in schools not state on page 18, the objectives are to provide sexual reproductive health services, including access to effective contraception technologies in association with social sector partners, read abortion, in a, uh, to enable learners to make informed choices, avoid unintended pregnancies, or as necessary to obtain abortions. I want to stress this does not say information, which would be bad enough, it says services. The DBE is providing services. Question two, does the Children's Act not allow children as young as 12 to obtain what is called medical treatment without parental consent? Your time is up. Amase, Amase. Your time is up.
Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, honorable members. My name is Carmen Klopas, and I reject the Bella Bill, particularly Clause 37. I have been home educating my son for four years now, and he has been thriving. He is a child with additional needs, and I have been able to help him by choosing curriculum that engages him, and I don't believe that CAP's curriculum would be in his best interest. We can take things easy in the morning, thereby keeping his anxiety low. He becomes very overwhelmed in busy and noisy places. He can be outdoors most of the day, which is where he loves to be. The decision to home educate is not one which we took lightly, as it meant a loss of an income. But my child's mental well-being is the only thing that mattered to me. Home education is not merely a means to an end. It is a lifestyle, and I would do it again. My son is uniquely and wonderfully made by God. He will never fit into anybody's box of what he should be learning and when he should know X, Y, or Z. And that is why home education is the best fit for him. I'd like to share a quote. Homeschooling is an individualized education, ever changing to meet a child's needs as they grow, but firmly planted and guided by the roots of a loving family. Thank you. One, two. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Chairperson. My name is Simpiwa Mpalo uh, from Naisna, but uh, I'm here from SATU, South African Democratic Teachers Union. I'm speaking on behalf of 264,000 members of SATU in South Africa and 13,000 in, in Western Cape. <clears throat> I'm going to speak on language policy of public schools. The clause, which is clause number five, it seeks to empower the HOD. Firstly, we as SATU, we support the bill. And my members are here to also support the bill as SATU. In language policy, it can be correct when my child go and find school in X Model C school. And when she got to school there, her language, her home language is English. And I'm mean, a course. It can't be correct at all. Because the SGP has decided the language policy of the ex model schools is English. So my child's language policy should be her language, her own language, which is it's a course. Then in this regard, Jefferson. SATU is recommending the following. It is our view that clear provision to regulate the language policy be inserted in the bill, again, to facilitate access and uniformity across the system. Provision should be made to unlock stalemates between the HOT and SGP with regard to the language policy of the school. We recommend that a clause be inserted which ensures that the SGPs do not apply the school language policy directly in the admission of entry phase learners. The school and governing bodies must remain responsible for administration. The SGP must not determine the language policy. The HOD should be a responsible person to determine the language policy of the school. Thank you very much. Honorable Chair and Committee Members, my name is Alison Swanepoel. I want to oppose the Bella Bill, especially Clause 37. 
Close 37 will take a wonderful opportunity away from me, where my parents, according to Article 26.3 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, have the right to choose the kind of education I need. You see, at my house, my mother really tries to give me many resources freely to my disposal. I know what I know what I like and can find resources and ideas about things that build on my passion. I do learn by experience, so I already did a snake handling course. I even did job shadowing with a qualified vet. Because I do think if I don't become a vet, I would become an entrepreneur. Did you know that without home education, you would have no good use for light bulbs. Thomas Edison was homeschooled by a nurturing mother who allowed him to, to do experiments to his heart content. She knew the right path for him, and so do God. My parents truly nurture and empower us. My mother definitely leads us and reads to us a lot. By seeing her model learning, my sister and I love to explore, and we actually started reading by ourselves. My dad, on the other hand, teach us fractions using ligurish all sorts. Who wants to miss out on that? I know I need to work hard to accomplish things, but with God on my side, who and what can be against me? Thank you for the opportunity and privilege to be here today and speak to you. Honourable Chair and Members, my name is Chelsea Rickard, I'm 16 years old, and I reject the Bella Bill, specifically Clause 37. Before Clause 37 is enforced, I would like you to hear my story. I was in the public school system until Grade 4. I did well at school and achieved the highest mark in my grade for the year. I started homeschooling in Grade 5, and it was only then that I developed a real love for learning. My mom, sister, and I did science experiments for chemistry, built models of the human body for anatomy, and learned about the world until I almost had all the capital cities of each country memorized. Learning became fun, and I thrived. School was no longer about working just to get a good grade at the end of the year. It was about learning how God's world works and how all the concepts turn the cogs of our everyday system. Learning became alive. Throughout my primary school years, my mom constantly did research to make sure that I was on track with my schoolwork. She chose different curriculums that matched my ability and would benefit my style of learning. She always made sure that I was getting the best education and that I would be well prepared for high school. Most of the time, we were way ahead. In grade eight, the workload became heavier. I started with the International Cambridge curriculum and I had qualified tutors that helped me with each of my subjects. All of my tutors were impressed with how well equipped I was to do this high level curriculum. I credit all of this praise to my mom and her hard work throughout my primary school years. When I wrote my grade 10 exams, I improved on my public school results, achieving an even higher average. So my point is this, homeschoolers are hardworking and dedicated. We don't sit in front of the television all day, no. Most of the time we work harder than the students in the public schools because we don't have teachers that explain everything to us. We figure it out on our own and in the process we develop learning and reasoning skills that most people only develop in university. Aren't these the type of people that you want in the workforce of South Africa today? Independent, critical thinking, problem solvers. Please don't limit us. Our potential is endless, but only if we are allowed to continue with school our way. Education is a constitutional right belonging to our parents. The Bella Bill seeks to prescribe our curriculums and enforce this with regular home visits. This is in direct opposition to our parents' constitutional rights and therefore we strongly oppose this bill. It is our opinion that this bill was instigated without sufficient research and consultation with the home education sector and we, the dedicated homeschoolers, therefore urge you to reconsider your decision. After all, we all still have to write a matric exam, but how we get there should be up to us. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon, um, honorable members of the parliament. My name is Sunny Davids, I'm from Wassel Bay. I'm representing the ACDP. 
Uh, we reject the Bella Bill, and in particular, Clause 41, the domain section 61 of the Schools Act South African, of South Africa. This clause allows the Minister to make regulations concerning learners' pregnancies. The DBE, uh, the DBE's policy on the prevention and management of learner pregnancies is about providing sexual reproductive health services to learners as young as 12 years of age. This service includes, as the policy itself says, enabling, and I quote, learners to obtain abortions. This can be done secretly. It can be done without parents or guardians knowing. It can be done without the consent of parents and even against the wishes of parents. And we uh, discovered, as we discovered during the COVID, um, COVID with the vaccinations, parents will be pushed out of the picture and their place taken by strategic and social partners who will be assisting 12-year-old learners to access abortions and all forms of contraceptions. We have, made, uh, we have many educators, educators with us today, and I'm sure that many of, or most of them would do this or would not do this or allow this to happen. However, they will not have a choice because if they, if they don't want to go to jail. The minister not only wants the power to make regulations, but also punish teachers, parents, and um, school governing body members. The second part of clause 41 will give the minister power to punish those who do not implement the regulations with fines and jail sentences up to six months. These regulations could force teachers to refer learners as young as 12 years for abortions and all forms of contraceptions and compel them to keep this a secret from their parents. The DBE may claim that this is how they will use these regulations, but how can we trust them if they haven't even said what these regulations are? Even then, in a few years' time, the minister could change these regulations. The minister is asking you as parl parliamentarians to give, to give her a blank check over our children. This is part of the war on families and with governments taking the place of parents. We therefore reject the Bella Bill, and in particular, Clause 41. We say stop the school abortions bill. We reject the Bella Bill, in particular, uh, Clause 41. This clause allows the minister to make regulations concerning learner pregnancies, the DBE's policies, and the prevention management of, the, of learners' pregnancies is about providing sexual reproductive health services to learners as young as 12 years. These services include, as the policy say, I'm sorry, I think I'm repeating myself. Um, we, we challenge them to publish the draft regulations. We challenge them to say... Your time is up, ma'am. Sure, this is daunting. <laughs> um, honorable Chair and Honorable Members, my name is Martina Broderick and I reject uh, the billable in its entirety. Um, my son is an incredibly clever child, um, but there was something wrong at school. I just felt it. The school didn't see it. No one picked it up. There was nothing indicating a problem, but I knew. Eventually, he was tested for dyslexia, which he has quite severely, actually. I took him out of school to homeschool him. We used the school curriculum. Uh, my child was so bored. Uh, we then gave him the choice to homeschool with a different approach to learning or to go back to school. He chose homeschooling. We did not use a curriculum. We did a lot of reading, writing, and math. All the other subjects we did for fun. Uh, we visited museums. We did experiments. Um, and then two years later, we moved to the Western Cape. And while looking for a school for my daughter, I found a school that I thought my son would enjoy. He attended for a week, and he loved it. He did some assessments and was placed a year above his age group. The dyslexia had not disappeared, but we had learned to, had learned to work around it. My son now has a love for learning. He really does well at school. Um, and I believe that is because we could do something different than normal schooling to help him. And this is why I reject the bill. If this bill gets passed, I will have no say in my children's education. Um, I do not believe that anyone has more interest in my children's education than what I have. There, is too many, there are too many kids with different personalities and ways of learning for the Minister of Education or the Department of Education to give each and every one of them what they would need. And that is where we as parents come in. That is my parental duty and also my constitutional right. Thank you very much.
Dear honorable members, most distinguished audience, my name is Otto Miller. I am 16 and I have been homeschooled for the past nine years. I reject the Bella Bill, especially Clause 37, and I will tell you why. Homeschooling isn't just about academics. It's about creating a safe and nurturing environment for children. Homeschooling lets children blossom without having to deal with bullies, distractions, and harmful peer pressure. Flexibility is homeschooling's secret weapon. Traditional schools are often like strict bosses with inflexible schedules, leaving little room for imagination or exploration. Homeschooling offers an open door to endless possibilities, where learning becomes an exciting adventure and every day is an opportunity to explore new horizons. The beauty of homeschooling lies in the freedom to learn and discover at your own pace, guided by curiosity. Homeschooling encourages children to march to the beat of their own educational drum. I myself have benefited greatly from homeschooling and have learned much. One of my favorite subjects is languages. I am fluent in French, English, and Afrikaans and can understand Latin, Russian, Spanish, German, Mandarin, Dutch, Osa, and Esperanto. I am working on becoming fluent in each of these. I also love etymology, not the study of bugs, but the study of word origins. The word school originated from the ancient Greek word skole, which initially meant leisure or spare time. In ancient Greece, skole referred to a place where people would gather for intellectual pursuits, discussions, and the exchange of ideas during their free time. Let us not forget and pass over the ancient Greek definition. If you learn, what does it matter where you learn? As world-renowned nuclear physicist Albert Einstein once remarked, education is what remains after one has forgotten what one has learned in school. In conclusion, homeschooling is an excellent option for education in South Africa. It empowers us to create a tailor-made education for children, nurtures the growth in a safe and flexible environment, and allows for the development of strong family bonds. So let's embrace the wisdom, humor, and inspiration that homeschooling brings. With homeschooling, we can turn off the TV, open the book, and create a brighter future for all people. Thank you. Um, Jesus. Um, good, um, good afternoon. Um, my name is Musnati Mapugane from Naisna. Um, I'm in support of the bill, um, but there are, do, there are few th items that I think we need to um, consider. Um, um, the first item would be um, alcohol in schools. We already have a high rate of um, alcohol use um, in, in South Africa. And I, need, I think the government needs to, to, look, to, look, to look into that. And secondly, it's uh, languages, language policy, um, home language policy. Um, it's very difficult to have, um, um, to study in um, uh, multi regional schools and then you've been t taught in English and forgetting your own language. And when it comes to, to, to applying for a job and then you get it, you're finding it very difficult because it's listed when you're applying for a job that you need to state your home language. So you need to look at that. And secondly, I need to recommend that um, the department needs to look at the spaces um, in schools, especially the schools in northern areas, um, because we are having the challenges of the poor um, skills, um, trainings, uh, sports activities, indoor sports activities in particular. Um, I, also want to, I also want to state the, the, the safety and security in schools. Um, the teachers are bec becoming victims. Um, the teachers are being physically assaulted by the students in schools. So I think that the, the, the department needs to look into deeply in terms of making sure that um, the, the, the teachers um, or the volunteers at schools are becoming protected in schools. So you need to beef up your, uh, your security in schools. And thirdly, lastly, um, it's very difficult. I'm staying in the northern areas in, in Eisner. When it's raining, when you're having 80% of rain, and then you have uh, students that need to walk um, at least 4.5 4 kilometers from where they stay into school, and witnessing them um, um, being wet and, and being sick due to the, the, to the rain and cold, it's very, it's very not fair for the students. Hence, we are having this high rate of um, um, dropouts and the, the school leaving schools because they, they are not safe. 
And, and lastly, the departments need to look into um, collaborating with um, organizations that are looking into empowering dropouts. Um, dropping out of school doesn't mean that you, you, are, you are a slow learner or you are dumb or anything like that. It means it could be the reason that you do not have a family that is supporting you financially and then you decide to leave schools. So the departments need to look into the, to the organizations that are implementing programs that will empower and upskill these young people. Um, um, so, so, so the departments need to, to, to look into, into that. Thank you. Doing is wrong. We can't be, we can't be many timekeepers. No, 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 you are wrong. You are wrong. You are wrong. You are wrong. No, you are wrong. You are wrong. You can't do what you are doing. It's our meeting. Nobody, nobody can't do it. Honestly, he can't. And with all due respect, but he can't do it. No, no. Can I note hands from this side? And I'm going to start from the back, coming this way. One, two, three, white, cream. Yeah, no, 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 ma'am, no, yes. Four, Menier, five, yes, yes, you. No, 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 the lady at the back. Blue, yes. There is a child, oh, sorry, I'm not sure if you're a child, but with white, yes. A blue jacket. How many do we have? How many chairs? How many chairs are we having? Okay, can that guy be the last one? Yes. Can you stand? Can you stand, Buti? Up front. Sekas, can you stand? Can everybody come? Can I keep the time? Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Maurice Brancais. I'm a member of a Democratic Party. I'm also a member of SATU, the biggest education union in this country. I'm staying and living on the border of the Eastern Cape and Western Cape in Harlem. First of all, Comrade Chair, uh, Madam Chair, personally, I'm in support of this bill. Secondly, my union is in support of this bill. You can't throw away the baby with the entire bathwater. If you see the speakers that spoke in terms of this very good grafted bill, they only speak about on 1.37. And if I kick off from, of, 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 I'm gonna mangles, because I'm a mangles. If I, if I speak about the uh, clause 37, it's I, would like that this remains in this bill. It should be refined, and there should be an inter, a, internal uh, accessor. So if you see the speakers that spoke, it's, in the, it's the people that can afford home, home teaching, home education. And our people, our people can't, they have, they have not the time. They don't have the energy, the time. If you even can see the crowd today, who's attending here? Our people are in work. They can't be here to speak about this bill. So in essence, I personally and my union support the bill. We say there's a no-go in terms of, let me go to my notes, in terms of corporal punishment. There's a no-go in terms of disruption of schools. There's a no-go in terms of selling alcohol in schools. Why do you want to sell alcohol in schools, but you reject clause 37? It doesn't make sense. 
So, uh, Chairperson, uh, actually I want to speak about on all 56 clauses. It will take me three hours, but let me rather uh, summarize it in one minute. Uh, we're saying also uh, the SGBs of schools play a very important role, but the SGBs can't be the reverie and the player. They can't be reverie and player. We also say that uh, in the bill they speak about uh, submission of uh, financial statements. We say yes, let financial statements be submitted termly, quarterly. Lastly, to, to summarize, in terms of homeschooling, it's nice to have homeschooling if you can afford it. It's nice if parents have the time, but our parents don't have the time in terms of homeschooling. So we say, in terms of the schooling, an external accessor must be appointed. And unfortunately, I just going to summarize this, Chairperson. Thank you very much. So your time is up. Next. Engos kakuru estalo. Ei kamalam jingulula mile class. And the Suka Kwanok Tula, a what six epito, Platin Peg Bay, and the Mele Usanko. A single Sanko, Chepasin, say support a pill, hundred per cent. A Unobang Elvasi support a pill. A Siko is Isa to Sogoban and his two ten Suka Platin Peg Bay, and this is a up, this is a mandate a pill and the support. Although Uhulmen, the Ezis, a Ikebo Elicha, Logobana, Makbekum Niniva. Now, why is this has sunk 100%. But it's not still a cheaper than a city. Because it's support as bill. Kunga aske kukauleze zonge zizindo. Zize nge klesha elifanele kleyo. Ninga tika nibuya as a bill. Ifanu bazi seven zile. Nibuya nge klesha. Klasi za upina si vote. Another five years to come. Please, si akela ku parlamente. Because le bill klasi chongile iza. Nende la lula kwa kunyene nentupeko iya ituta because Dogzo kwa zi doba la kukaesho otishara kwa great R Although there are NGOs Ezi shuku meza otishara be great R be peya ipinat Kwa ukul mende ngenele la why Siza ikaba le pila skwa zi at all Siya kutela oko kubana si kelita menisona kuinda haba Ye gangsterism in our schools Aba zali mabata tinga kaya parents must must start in that paper to make sure the yes, seven the sana not to share a couple of school or who was a kid of an abandoned a couple of the less colloid i live a food telica the kamzali look on a packet of school and who's a quasi kupele le mego ya can start as a miss in a second is going with department lastly sinaste losi plated by pay chepasin sin a problem is now you have one one about needs because in my high school is the only high school is in Nayo Yabanda Bamyama. And good to all the Sikela, Okokbana, it department, Maiso Sakela is new school. But in the end, the guy are only it prefabs. And as prefabs as Guazu Guanela, Abanduana, because Zonke I what? Plus minus five what? As the as the net, why Mare High School from grade, uh, grade, grade seven up to grade eight. See, I tell you, I'm going to push the chapasin. Good department. Thank Your you. Your time is up. Greetings, Chair and all committee members. Thank you for your for the opportunity to be here today. My name is Lula Class, and I'm from Nokutula Ward 6, and I am representing Sanko. I support the bill 100%. And the reason being, there is no need, or there is no reason for me to come all the way from where I come from to be here and only to say that I do not support the bill. During the apartheid regime, there was no such thing, no such opportunities at all. So we really appreciate that. I understand that rich parents can afford 
homeschooling. So for us, the poor of the poorest, we, we say we support the bill because that's something that we, not we cannot afford. But what I would like to mention is that we wish that everything can happen on time, not only to come bring the bill or such gatherings only when it's about time to vote. So can we please make things happen before, beforehand? And we, peel, we, peel the, we plead with the parliament to open job opportunities. We're also grateful about this bill as it is going to open job opportunities for teachers to teach great R students. And we ask that we all work together to fight gangsterism in schools. Parents should work with teachers to fight those. Children should feel at, at, while they are at school that they should not be part of gangsterism. I would also like to mention that schools are overpopulated. We only have one school, which is Maria School, and we have asked the department to build more schools so that schools cannot be this uh, overpopulated. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sharon Losper. I'm going to speak English and Afrikaans. Um, I'm standing here on behalf of the ACDP, my anointed academy for Excellence Foundation, NPC, as well as I'm an ex-teacher. So I'm talking uh, on, uh, uh, on that background of uh, my own God-given life story as well. Uh, ek dink ek, uh, uh, dis goed om die kresjes die geleentheid te gee, om graad pre-air 4 tot 5 op te lei, want daar is een groot leemte om hulle op te voed, maar die skole het nie genoeg plek, kapasiteit om hulle ook te akkomodeer nie. Verban alcohol in sy totaliteit by skole, want dit is een nadeel van baba tot op die oudste persoon wat lewe. Allow parents to homeschool their children. Want as ons kyk na die uitsla, dan sien ons dat dit, die ouwe, die kinders wat gehomeschool word, doen uitstekend. So as dit is baie goed plus 37, we are in favor of that. En haal die verantwoordelijkheid weg van die leer, van, van kinders van ouderdom 12 in uh, uh, plus 41. We, uh, me and as well as all three uh, 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 things that I resemble, reject the Bella Bill in its totality. And uh, particularly Clause 41, Section 61 of the South African Schools Act. This clause allows the minister to make regulations concerning learner pregnancy. The DBE's policy on the prevention and management of learner pregnancies include comprehension, comprehensive uh, sexual, sexuality education. Sorry, will it have a The DBE has forced CSE and scripted lessons plans on schools, and they have started that as an employer, it can enforce educators, uh, educators to teach CSE and other programs that are in conflict with the educator's conscience. This clause will give the minister the power to make the regulations to entrench the CSE program in schools. Regulations will make the CSE law and the minister not only wants the power to make regulations, but also to punish educators, parents and SGB members who don't follow the regulations. The second part of clause 41 will give the minister power to punish those who don't implement the regulations with fines and jail sentences of up to six months, educators and SGB will not have a choice if they want to avoid jail. They will have to teach and implement whatever the minister Your time is up, ma'am. <laughs> Next. Honourable Chair, Honourable Members, my name is Hannah and I reject the Billa Bill, specifically Clause 37. I went to public school in pre-primary and Grade 1. 
My idea of learning as a young child was fun-filled hours of reading, playing, and art. I knew my ABCs long before I was five, though again through play and reading. In grade one, my teacher told me that speeches was a serious event and should not be considered as fun, completely extinguishing my love of speaking to such a degree that I blatantly refused to do orals at all, where I used to love show and tell. I'm a fast learner and my perception of school became lying with my head on my arms and waiting for the rest of the class to finish assignments. I was not allowed to read, draw, or do extra work my mother sent with to school. I struggled to sit still and the teacher, trying to keep me quiet, told me there's a tiny devil sitting on my shoulder telling me to be disruptive. Can you imagine a six-year-old, terrified of this devil on her shoulder, getting nightmares of what she was told? When I started homeschooling in grade two, I could work at my own pace. Instead of being depressed, angry, miserable, and unhappy, I completely changed and was devouring Famous Five and C.S. Lewis Narnia series books at the age of eight years old. I had to write a comprehensive summary for every book I read. I am against Clause 37 as everyone is unique and so are their needs. Choice in schooling and varying curriculums used promotes individuality, maturity, and entrepreneurial skills development, which creates more job opportunities. Some people are academically orientated while others are more technically orientated. If, by following an out of ordinary curriculum suits my needs, which allows me to contribute to our country's economy at a much younger age, instead of being a burden to said economy. Clause 37 usurps parental rights as guardians of their children and enables someone else to do what they see fit, not what is fit for the child. They are appealing to people and avoiding the question, simply stating that they know what is best for every child, generalizing and squishing every person into the same category. I oppose Clause 37 as it violates a child's constitutional right to privacy in Subsection 3, where there is also vagueness in whether home visitations, as the policy states they must occur, but the bill states that it may occur. It portrays the guardians as guilty that they do not have the child's best interest at heart until proven innocent, which is a statistical fallacy which is proved by lack of evidence. The Children's Act already provides adequate protection for children. It requires educational choices to be made in the child's best interest and according to the constitution, the parent or guardian of that child has the right to decide what the education will be. During my homeschooling journey, I was taught to have a love of learning and I can, and I can self-study as long as my parents, while my parents have their own jobs. So thank you for your time. Up. Greetings everybody, shalom. Dumelang, goeie dag. Uh, allow me to address you, members of parliament, Madam Speaker. I just want to say that most of the previous speakers actually underlined the emphasis of what I wanted to say. So I'm not going to repeat what others said. I, I want to focus on clause 27 slash clause 2. Why? I can tell you a story and this will explain why we strongly reject and oppose this Clause 27 and with it bellable. Last year, or let me guess, beginning of last year, or let me say the, the year before last, a process was indicated in a place called Sikuhat, deep rural area, where the process was supposed to be followed according to paper. It never really happened. Can I fast forward? End of 2021. The school was closed. Can I fast forward? May, June 2022. We discovered that the school was closed prematurely. The school was not supposed to be closed. Can I add to that? The children at the moment are still at the school. Yes, the children are still at the school. 30 plus learners without a teacher. Department of Education are aware of that. On the first day of school 2021, I approached the circuit manager at the time and I asked him, sir, is it possible that you can offer these children the most basic rights a child has? And that is education and that is 
the daily food supply? His answer to me was no. Up until today, I can tell you it's just the grace of God that helped us. We had a teacher in between. He resigned to support because of the challenges that we face. And I'm saying to you today that we cannot agree with this clause 27 slash clause 2 because we are going to raise a generation of orphans and we cannot allow that. Sekuchat has got the proof that, and I'm standing before you today as a child that came from a school where there was one teacher. When I got to the, I, to the bigger school, I was first in my class academically. I ended my senior school as the head boy. How can you say small schools must close? I want you to rethink when you say that small schools does not deliver. And I thank you. Good day, my name is Abigail Hughes and I reject the bill clause 37. I came to live with my auntie and her family at the end of 2021 due to personal reasons. I was attending an Afrikaans government school in Gramstown at the time. When I arrived in George, my auntie thought it would be best if I rather homeschool than returning to a public school for grade 8. As her sons are homeschooled, she was confident this would be the best route for me. At first, I found it quite challenging, but as weeks passed, I settled in and I started to enjoy my journey. I was able to pace myself with a flexible schedule. Living so close to the sea, we would often head off to the beach in the morning for an hour. Or I might attend a homeschool get-together on a Friday morning well then just simply catch up on my work in the afternoon. I have awesome support at home. For just example, my grandma helps me with English. Our sessions are relaxed and usually enjoyed in the afternoon with a cup of tea. But when it comes to ex exams and tests, she's strict to scoring me on the work I deliver. Maths, on the other hand, was challenging, even for my auntie, so we decided to enlist the services of an independent teacher. I attend classes in the morning with her, and as a bonus, I also do guitar lessons with her once a week. All my points have improved by at least 10% on average. Parry encouraged to read our Bibles, pray, and make godly decisions. Our motto is, what would Jesus do? The teaching of Christian values was lacking at school, and I realize now the impact it had on me. Yes, homeschooling is not for everyone, but it's available for everyone. The friends I have made this past year in homeschool environment, even a few homeschool friends at my church or youth group are all following different curriculums and styles. Homeschooling of homeschooling, yet we're all happy, normal, and balanced teenagers. So in conclusion, I feel homeschooling should remain the choice of our parents, because who knows us better what we need and what we're capable of achieving. Thank you. Let's just clarify to the table there. When people have spoken, I don't know what forms are they bringing to you after they have spoken. When people have spoken, I don't know what forms are you taking and for what. Because you are supposed to know that a person has spoken and the person cannot bring a form. It's a form or it's a talk. Next. Mamela Keput. Mamel. Dick address. Immediately. Yes, the parliament. Chaperson, why? Ndim. A quota dialogue. Up. So Mamela band so smart now is sick, Mamel. But Kabila Gengok. Ukabila and Utet. Kauniga Banyaband Batet and Tagas. The Kalunga busy order up as committing in. So the parliament put. So the parliament and Tagas. So the parliament and Tagas. And petem nala. Glenda ukalu kwata kuyu. Ayi kona mtanj. Tikalu chale pa anziput. Tikalu chale pa. Ayi maning sun kuza. Go cherish the meeting. Sun kuza. Not go cherish the meeting. The cherish. No, no, no put. No. No. Next. 
Good afternoon, Honourable Chair and Honourable Members of this committee. My name is Henry Roots and I'm a grade 10 homeschool student. I've been homeschooled my entire school career until now. We are part of an extraordinary supportive homeschool community, surrounded by like-minded people who share our values, including a diverse group of earnest students. I'm proud to call these students my friends. I reject the Bella Bill, specifically Clause 37. Clause 37 threatens the diversity and quality of South African education and limits students' freedom to learn at their own pace and explore their interests. Firstly, Clause 37 demands regular assessments by a competent assessor. As a homeschool student, I have the freedom to learn at my own pace, at different grade levels, without the stress of comparison. I believe it is unfair to compare and test the standards of students from different environments with disparate curriculums or with the same assessments. This would force us, hardworking, responsible students, to conform to a specific base an assessment test set by individuals unbeknownst to our curriculums. Secondly, I oppose to the Bella Bill due to the curriculum choice. As a consequence of homeschooling, I have the opportunity to receive an individualized education with a vast range of subjects, skills and topics, both compulsory and voluntary. This allows me to broaden my horizons, preparing me for life after school, including career choices and basic life skills. I firmly believe that not all curriculums work for all students, as we are individuals with divergent needs. By teaching and assessing all students to the same set standard, the system will impinge some students and burn others out completely. If the Bella Bill legislates all curriculums to align with GAPS in order to facilitate assessments, it will completely captivate our freedom and learning. Lastly, I reject the Bella Bill due to the fact that it will stick parental authority, including my parents' ability to make vital decisions regarding my education. As part of the youth in South Africa, I want freedom to live out my own values, and I do not want government values enforced on me through my education. Furthermore, I want freedom to be able to authorize the best education for my own children in the years to come. Therefore, I ask you to reconsider this bill and please to do a proper social economic impact assessment, including the homeschool communities of South Africa. I thank you sincerely for your time and consideration. Next. Well, good afternoon, Madam Chair and uh, members. My name is Jacques Leroux. I'm from uh, this area. I am a proud South African. I am for education, but I am against the Bella Bill. I am a father of a homeschool family. I've got four children. I've been, we've been homeschooling our children for the past nine years, and I understand the benefits of it. But here is why I'm, why I'm against the Bella Bill. It is in conflict with the Articles 26 uh, number three of the Universal Declaration of the Human Rights, which states, parents have a prior right to choose the kind of education that shall be given to their children. I'm a functioning South African. I pay in my tax. I obey, uh, obey the traffic rules. <laughs> I have the right to choose how my children are raised what sort of education they should receive. The Bella, or the bill demonstrates the state's exceeding the limits of its authority and responsibility and potentially usurping the role of responsible parents. It assumes that the head of department knows better than a parent. What is in his or her child's best interests? It is a violation to allow an official of the DBE to usurp this role of the parent. In all other areas of responsibility, nutrition, healthcare, housing, clothing, parents do not have to satisfy anyone that they are equipped to fulfill their obligations. They are assumed to be competent unless proven otherwise, which I do agree with. If a person is incapable, if he's irresponsible, sure, make that decision for him. But for those who are serious about raising their children right, about choosing what is right for them, whether they 
are English, Afrikaans, Sutu, Koza, whichever way they go, if they choose that to be right and are responsible, then that is the way that they should go. Thank you for this opportunity and make the right decisions for us. Thank you. Yeah, others came, I did not point, but anyway, let's proceed. Good day, honorable members. Oh, sorry. Good day, honorable chair, members, and fellow citizens. My name is Hepsiba, 13 years old, and I've been homeschooled all my life. I have my own small business, selling play earrings and babysitting friends' children. I'm the third child out of five and love God with all my heart. I'm an ordinary person who dreams of a brighter future, but if the ballable is passed, that would become very difficult. I very strongly oppose the restrictions stipulated in the Bella Bill. It should be every parent's right to choose which education suits their child's abilities best. Parents are there to help you, guide you, and to discipline you. They are your mentors and teachers. They want what's best for you. It is not the government's place to interfere with the sacred bond between child and parent, and that should be a basic human right. A quality education is the key that unlocks doors to our future. As Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. His vision for South Africa was one of freedom, equality and opportunity, and I fully support his vision. I also oppose section 16 and 37 of the Bella Bill, for it promotes unequal treatment. Section 16 treats home-educated children and their families differently from those enrolled in traditional schools. While students in traditional schools are not subject to a home visit, home-educated children are singled out for monitoring and evaluation. This unequal treatment undermines the principle of fairness and equal rights in education. Therefore, I object to it. Section 16 and 37 of the Bella Bill infringes upon privacy and disrupts the learning environment, imposes burdens and paperwork requirement, hinders flexibility, drains valuable resources, and creates barriers to accessibility. These aspects of the bill undermines the principles of freedom, flexibility, and choice that are essential for a robust and inclusive education system. So let us not compromise on the dreams of children who yearn to make a difference. The time for action is now. I will not settle for a one-size-fits-all approach that suffocates our dreams. Let us rise up, hand in hand, stand with me, stand with the youth, and stand against these injustices proposed in the Bella Bill. Thank you. Good day, honorable members. My name is Luella Ellis. I'm 12 years old and I'm currently homeschooled. I oppose clause 37 and 27. So when my mom asked if I would like to come and speak today, of course I said yes, as this is my future we are talking about. You see, um, you see I, I am classically labeled as ADHD. I don't fit into the standard CAPS mainstream school. I don't fit inside the box. In fact, what box? Mainstream schools tend to put kids in the box. I've always been taught that the answers are in the universe. I don't need to think outside the box as I know there is no box in the first place. Typical standard schools are not producing inventors, creators, entrepreneurs. They are producing brainwashed robots who cannot think for themselves. Well, sorry, that doesn't work for me. I am, I am a free-thinking creative, an, in, um, an inventor, a designer, and want to remain this way. I know I, um, I know I have something special to offer the world. I have been in a mainstream school system before, where I was judged, um, judged and rated only, um, only as good as the information that I managed to remember in the exams. How crazy is that? 
We started with a test and exams in grade four, and it doesn't end until grade 12. The, stresses, um, the stress that it puts on us is horrible. I mean, there is so much more to me, and there is so much more I can offer besides what I managed to remember from a textbook. I remember the first tests and exams I wrote in grade four. I was so stressed and nervous. I know, and I know I didn't answer all the questions 100% correctly. I couldn't think straight. How unfair to write everything about me from these tests and exams for the next 10 years. And that would ultimately decide my future. Can't wait, um, sorry. Can't you see that there is so much more to a child's learning and creativity? I want to learn so much more than what is in the textbooks. We are not all the same, so how can we all be tested the same? I want to grow up in a world where there is no fear, where there is love, compassion, empathy, creativity, and, in um, and innovation. I am me, and I deserve to be heard. I, my brother, and my parents deserve the right to, be to choose the education route that we believe is best for me. I really cannot understand why you um, guys want to try close Waldorf or Montessori schools. What about all the jobs that will be lost? Where will the kids go to school? To the already overfull schools. Like what? This just seems crazy to me, and it doesn't make any sense at all. Please hear me. Please do not take away my future away from me. Thank you. Good day, honorable member, chairs, public. Um, my name is Janneke Nokia, and I greet you with Ke'e Karate, the motto of our code of arms, meaning diverse people unite. Honorable Chair, I reject the Bella Bill in its full capacity, specifically Clause 37, dealing with home education, as it does not honor the educational diversity in South Africa, and then also Clause 41. For time constraints, I will follow a ABC variation poetic form from A to Z to elaborate on the value of home education for us as family, as well as the state where applicable my rejection of the clauses are. So we start with A. In awe and an amazement of learning, the authority of education lies with parents versus clause 37, merely an annual assessment, which will have both a financial as well as a time constraint on home educators. B, the Bible, the word of the living God from which I will teach my children daily. C, creativity, curiosity, character versus a CAPS curriculum that um, promotes a one curriculum fits all approach. CAPS educational program is divided to knowledge by age grade levels instead of some home educators which identify skill building and mastering grades as alternative way of measuring progress in children. D. Diversity. Learners, children learn differently. Discipline and diligence. In all they do, home chores play and learn. E, exploration. Exploration drives greater learning experiences, embedding children with real life experiences, which home education offer best, will enrich their life, making knowledge that is gathered relevant, aiming in remembering the gained knowledge this can start in and around one's own town and community. And as a stone dropped in water, this expansion will circle to further spheres. F, family first. Freedom in education choice. G, children is a gift of God. Parents should also be rightly loved and taught. As the constitution of our country, there's already laws protecting them. H, in humbleness to learn from others and to serve versus home visits outlined in clause 37, violating section 14 of the constitution, leading with protection of privacy of children where parents act in the best interest of their child. I, individual attention promote deeper learning and promoting Harvard Gardner's nine types of intellect, intelligence in our home education. G, Jesus, he will be in 
our, you will be part of our homeschool journey. K for knowledge, L, life is precious from conception and therefore rejecting the clause 41, um, which is also L for learning every day, cultivating a lifelong learning attitude. M, Your morality. Up, Thank you very Thank much. You. Good afternoon. My name is Michiel Hugo. I'm 18 years old. And, um, I've been homeschooled for all my life and I'm opposed to clause 37. Last year at age 17, I wrote my first ever exam. This was a Cambridge exam for IGCSE English, for which by God's grace, I, sco I scored 76%. A score that I also met for my AS Afrikaans and AS ICT. And for my IG Computer Science, I scored 89, 86%. This, this I did after a year, of, a, year of a year of studying, after following no previous set, previously set curriculum. Let me reiterate, I had no previous exposure to a fixed curriculum. This I did... Um, Sorry. Yeah, revealed. Yeah, that this I did, however, with extreme struggles, um, as was later revealed that year, that uh, that I have sev a severe form of dyslexia, called dysphonia, called dysphonia a combination of two dyslexias called dysphonia or visual dyslexia or dysphonia. An, an auditory dyslexia. This explained a lot of my struggles and uh, why I struggled with a lot of terms and so on, formulas. That is why after we had finished the exams, we dropped the Cambridge system. Okay. Um, in, the Cambri in Cambridge, and I believe in all school curriculums, they focus in in a way, in more than one way, learning on how to answer in an exam rather than learning how to uh, learning about the subjects in question. How can this be education? When when Real Madrid player Vinicius Junior is called a monkey, it is rightfully called um, abuse. But when it is but when it is said in biology class, it is called education. How can this be called education? Also, it, last week, exactly eight years ago, my younger brother was diagnosed with leukemia, blood cancer, then only, then only six years old, and I myself only 10. What happened was completely unexpected and hit us from, from out of the blue. Today, even eight years later, I can still remember the, the, the talk we had with my parents at, the, at Harry's just across the hospital, where they broke the news that, uh, to us that our lives were, were soon to be changed drastically and that we might lose our little brother. From that day onward, it was constant moving between George, Cape Town, Potchefstroom Pot and Pretoria. Most of the time, me and my brother stayed with our aunt and cousins, either in George or in Poch, whilst our parents stayed with our brother in Cape Town. Or Pretoria, and this continued so for three years. How would it have been possible for me and my brother to be to have been monitored or visited by a state official in those tumultuous times? Your time times? is up, Mr. I'm coming. Here yeah, now, and probably to close. And I'm going to the back. One. You must be born lucky for me to point you. 
No, don't stand up. No, sit down, ma'am. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Yes. Yes. Ma'am, with sunglasses? Yes. Uh, that is, yes, 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 no. Yes. No. There, yes. Yes. Ah, uh ah, -uh. uh -uh. You know what? Yes. Ewet, yem, you menir. No, the no, the elder one than you. Age matters. Ageism. Yes. Yes, you. You, you, you looking at the back, sunglasses, and you, ma'am. No, 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 the ma'am, yes, the yellow, yes, ma yes. Do we still have chairs? You, you play, yes, you. Say, Valamanjo, we are closing. We are closing. Yamangola inland. Sani Tati, Yamangola. All right. Uh, that's the last. I'm sorry. If you're still sorry, you must. For those, really, let's take forms and fill them. Honourable Chair, Honourable Members. My name is Lillian Lestain and I reject the bill, the Bella Bill in its entirety and specifically Clause 37 pertain, pertaining home education and Clause 27 pertaining to the closure of small schools. Parents are the first and only port of call on decisions relating to their child's education and must have the right of school choice and curriculum. Order. We are in Parliament. Yeah. <laughs> we are still in Parliament. Order. I call for a clause protecting freedom of curriculum or approach and that if any assessment must be done, it is done according to that approach. The CAPS curriculum is not for every child. Our peer eight-year-old little girl has got cerebral palsy. She cannot walk on her own, cannot talk a language understood by others and cannot sit still. How do you suggest we teach CAPS curriculum to her? Independent schools, should also be allowed to use a curriculum suited, suited for children with special needs, where CAPS is simply not an option. Secondly, I reflect to a clause 27, especially section 33.4, which allows for micro schools to be closed without the MEC ever giving reason. Small schools can be the only means of access to education in sparsely populated areas with vast distances between schools and poor road condition, condition for public transport. Apart from that, the public schools are overcrowded and very little to no one-on-one -on -one attention. This makes no sense to add more pupils to overcrowded situations, classrooms. I thank you for your time. Um, Molweni, uh, good afternoon, Khuya Madar. My name is Tandi Swakatana. I'm coming from George. I'm a George counselor from the DA, the Democratic Alliance. I'm staying in Tembaletu. 
Uh, Chairperson, good afternoon. Parliament members, afternoon. And also the community members that are here. My question is the alcohol that is supposed to be sold in fundraising at school. I'm really concerned about that one. It is really concerning because currently in our townships, most kids are drinking alcohol. And if we make example and take parents who will be going to fundraising events, and also consume alcohol in front of kids, they wouldn't be making example to those kids. Also safety and securities in school is very important. Another thing, Chairperson, and your committee is that uh, teenage pregnancy, please just look at that one as well. Chairperson, Parliament received more than 18,000 written comments. A third have already been analyzed and 89% of the written comments want the Bella Bill completely rejected. 6% object to some parts of the bill. Only 35 submissions supports the bill. 0.19% of written comments. It is important that the rejection of the reflected in the public hearing as well. Last year, a number of organizations made representations in parliament. Many of those, many of the organization had the some comments with Bella Bill as the DA. This is a prime example of an issue we must drive using the whole society approach. The DA launched English Africans petitions, which received more than 29,000 signatures combined. Chairperson, in the Bella Bill does not regulate online and blended learning. Since the COVID lockdown, this type of learning has become popular and should have been included. Another thing, Chairperson, in the bill fails to provide enough protection for learners that have, that have to attend disciplinary hearing in case of sexual abuse cases, where learners are often victims of sexual adult abuse. Chairperson, again, the bill ignores the real issues of schools. It has Your no regulation. Your time is up now. Good afternoon, Honourable Chair, Chairperson, Honourable Members of Committee, and everybody here. Thank you for all your time, and thank you for taking time to listen to us. My name is Angus Burgess. I'm a father of three, um, and uh, a concerned father and husband. Um, I stand against Clause 37 of the Bella Bill for the following three reasons. We believe that it stands against our constitutional rights. Um, specifically section 28.2 of the Constitution that states that the child's best interests are of paramount importance in every matter concerning that child. My question is, uh, who is best suited to look after the best interests of our child? The state or us as parents? I believe it is our constitutional right as parents to be able to make those decisions. In such so doing, should be able to choose the quality of education for our children. In the same way, we are entrusted by the Constitution to feed them and protect them. Uh, we believe that the state should only intervene when it's clear that parents can no longer or are no longer capable of fulfilling these responsibilities. I'd just like to read from Proverbs 22, verse 6. It says, Train up a child in the way he should go. And even when he is old, he shall not depart from it. This should give us some perspective in the way we educate our children. I'd like to appeal, appeal to section 29.2 of the Constitution that our country stands on. And that states that the state must consider all reasonable educational alternatives. 
And as we just heard, the Bella Bill is not considering things like online education. And it seems like uh, it's hampering things like homeschool education. Um, the question is, is homeschooling a reasonable alternative? Or what is unreasonable about it? Look, homeschooling is a choice that many of us parents and families choose to make for many reasons. And they're not racist reasons or separatist reasons or privileged reasons. They're reasons out of interest and concern for our children's best, best wishes, considering those paramount importances. The third reason why we reject the section of this clause is that it violates section 29.3 of the Constitution, stating that everybody has the right to establish and maintain at our own expense an independent educational institution, provided that you are registered. Specifically, we stand against the methods proposed in the bill to address subsections B and C. Unfortunately, your time is up, Baba. Thank you very much for your time. Next. Honourable Chairperson and members, good afternoon, and to all the public, thank you so much for your time. My name is Renee Matthews, and I am a mum, and I am from a family of educators, and I understand, I understand the billable, I understand the need to put some regulation in, but I would like to voice a concern for Clause 37 regarding homeschooling. When I put my children into school, I did so with the belief that school was best. I went to a very good school myself and I wanted to put them into school. But then one day, when I pulled up to the school, I saw my little boy smiling. Well, he wasn't smiling, I saw my little boy's face and then when I pulled up, I couldn't see him anymore. And the reason why is because he had collapsed onto the floor. There was nothing medically wrong with him, there was something physically wrong with him because he couldn't take the strain of school anymore. At that point, he wasn't sleeping well, and he was suffering from some health problems, including getting a runny tummy every day at school from anxiety. So I chose to take him home, and I chose for the next few months to give him a home education. But part of that would be to take all the stress out of learning. No more assessments, no more, no more stress, no more, um, none of that. But I did teach him in six months the CAPS curriculum for his year. And then for after that, I had a very basic, laid-back approach to his education, and I taught him to learn to love again. Now, the way the billable stands right now, I wouldn't have been able to have that freedom because I would have been threatened with jail time had I chosen to not register. Had I registered, I would have had to have complied with assessments the way the billable is going to stand now. But I was able to give him a love for learning in about a year and a half where he managed to de-stress and I got rid of that trauma for him. And it wasn't cheap. And I'm not a rich white lady who can afford to, to homeschool my children. That's not how it is. I had to give up a school job. My husband had to take on two jobs. And I had to teach all afternoon in order to make up for the lack of finances from choosing to homeschool him myself. It was due to the fact that I was concerned that he would end up as one of those children who commit suicide because school pressure is too much. Exam pressure is too much at a young age. He's now 16, he's in a school, and he's getting 90% for most of his tests. And I'm proud of him for that. And I'm so glad that I had the opportunity. Please don't take away that freedom from us. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Good evening, honorary members and public. Um, my name is Vashti Fisser, mother of Sabin Sika and Harvey Unati. I object, object the Bella Bill, sorry. I'm not going to be speaking about, I haven't prepared a full on speech. I'm going to be speaking from the heart. I'm not going to be giving you facts, but just speaking from my own experience. I've taught at a public school and I have a passion and a love for children. I've also seen how children struggle and how it isn't a one-size-fits-all. This isn't just about homeschooling and not homeschooling. It's a, not a we and us and them. I think it is for everybody. Um, 
I have started my own little cottage school, and it caters for children who are not coping in mainstream schools. Either they are getting bullied, and my concern is their wellness. My number one priority when it comes to children is their wellness, and I would hope that the government also has that at their heart. I think that the children are the future for the country, and if they are unstable, then we will have an unstable future. At my school, my number one thing is their wellness, number two is their character, and number three is their education. And it's amazing how the education just happens organically when everything else is going well. I also have a very open communication policy with my parents. So when things are happening that children experience, their parents are there and we help them and we support them. So there are a few things in the Bella Bill that I've posed. One is the sale of alcohol at schools because I think children are being exposed to so many things already and we want to try to protect them and protect their innocence. Number two is also the abortions that they'll be allowing for 12 year olds and the repercussions that will happen with teachers when they step in and they don't do it according to what the government wants them to do. Um, sorry. Uh, Just wait a bit, colleagues. Parliament is in session. Can we not drown the speaker? Because what is important is to listen to what she is saying. Thank you very much. Proceed. Thank you very much. So, just in final closing, I object to the billable just for the wellness of the children, not necessarily for homeschooling. If it does come to homeschooling, um, some of the comments of the we and us, that's something that I also want to try for the future to step away from, because we are one people, we are one nation, we are in this together, and I think we all want what's best for the children. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, you had the message. You can join before the transport leaves. Okay, now thank you, driver. Baba, proceed. Oh, goeie middag. Uh, my name is Gert Marie, and I speak my openlik uit teen die Bella Bill. Dit is een gevaar voor de Republiek van Zuid-Afrika als kinders, onze toekomst. Ik is die voorheg, ik het lomp in maanden geleden direct met die lede, met die zet, kon gezeld. Het is vandaag hier, omdat ik die er alle bemachtig is om in mijn gemeenschap te kon werken. Daar zit lid van die parlement, MP Soekers. Ek en sy het so paar maande gelede, daar we die riviere van die Gourits en die Valse rivier by mekaar kom, het ons in een berg uitgeloop, paaikies by bokke, en ons het mense gaan besoek in hulle huise, met ernstige behoeftes om onderrug. Ek en my MP uh, Soekers het half zes in die ochtend in Sonskijn vallei in die straat met ouders vergader oor behoeftes van kinders. Daar die parlementariërs daar is nie net daar achter die tafels nie. Hulle kom uit, hulle rij uit. Hulle is in die ochende, want ons ouders soos ons hier is. Julle werk al vroeg. Julle klim al zes hier taxi. Julle kan je nie aan vergader nie. Dis daar die mense. Wie is ek? Gert Marie. Niemand ken die Bella wet beter as ek. Ek het die Bella wetgeving light version. In hierdie spesifieke distrik in Mosselbaai beleef. Hier het ek gesien hoe een distrik directeer een Onderwijs hoof, meneer Walters, wette wat definitief geskryf is in klip. Kinders hulle hierdie rechte misgin. En as ons Bella wet, 
gaan activeren, gaan het beteken, dat daar die personen, daar die directeren, daar die onderwijs hoofde, hulle gaan met ons weg hard loop. Ek kon hulle omdraai, verlede week het ons gewen, een meneer uh, Jonkers, en teen die onderwijs van die weeskap, daar is ge, op die teen, ek denk ons kan aan het klap daarvoor, wacht daar, daar is teen die onderwijs hoof, beslis dier die minister van onderwijs, minister Meinier, dat kinders het die reg om te kies, volgens die behoefte van die Republiek van Zuid-Afrika, of hulle bus voor reis school toe, 20 kilometer, en of daar die onderwijs hoof, wat vastgeskop het, dat 6 en 7 jarige kinders, in een koshuis moet gaan bly, vanaf die maandag tot die vrijdag, die scheiding angst, wat daar die onderwijs hoof, hierdie direct van hierdie distrik op daar die kinders geprojecteer het, die dopafien afscheiding wat dit in die brein die negatieve gevolge wat permanente skade met die scheidingsangst wat van die tafel gevee is dier ambtenarij wat ons nou unfortunately, unfortunately your time is up Baba, thank you Inter interpreters Honourable Chair, Honourable Members, my name is Gert Maria and I am speaking today openly against the Bella Bill because I think that it represents a significant danger against the Republic of South Africa's children and against our future. Months ago, I had the opportunity to talk one of these, to one of these members of Parliament and they helped me do my work here. A few months ago, I was able to work and walk through the Choritz area, where the rivers come together, the Choritz and the False River. We went up mountains, we went down streams and paths and spoke to the parents in the places that are not able to come here. The parents who work late, who can't sit here until six at night, but who also have opinions and matters that they want to bring up. They're not just sitting behind tables, they are working. There are parents who can't come here. I. Because we were able to talk to them, I ascertained certain needs, and we were able to make a difference in some cases. For instance, quite recently, I was involved in a case in Mossel Bay, where the district director and the headmaster, Mr. Walters, headbutted directly against children's rights. Fortunately, we won that case, but if the Bella Bill wins, then that will no longer be the case. Last week, we won a case against Mr. Jonkers, and I do think that deserves a round of applause. And the minister made that decision that we should win that case against Mr. Jonkers because the fact of the matter was that children should be able to choose and those children will be able to choose to take a bus rather than stay in a hostel. These are children who are six or seven years old and they were asked to stay in a hostel rather than take the bus. The separation anxiety that this gives rise to, the high levels of stress hormones and permanent damage were projected onto them by Mr. Junkers. And this is because of officials. And here I was interrupted. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker. Next speaker. Uh, good evening. Uh, greet everyone in the wonderful of uh, God's wonderful name. Uh, there's no other name that I can greet you this evening. I just want to bring in your conclusion that I'm, I'm against the Bella Bong, uh, Bella Bell, Minik, uh, uh, because of the reason uh, I'm from, uh, grow up in on, on a farm. So I was also on, uh, knows about farm schools and how small schools was and that. And, uh, but the education there, we get good education from the farm schools because if you can see the person that you see here today is a manager director in security that I'm standing here today as education from a farm. The same like every children that you can see, even sport, like if you
you see the Bamba Floors playing for South Africa rugby, but they was coming from the farm, but now they want to close the farm schools and all the small schools, they want to close it down. So where is the education? And even you don't even, even have enough schools in, in, the, educa in, the, in the areas because of course of uh, the classes are big, the, the teachers can't even cope with, with all the children and sometimes there's people like actually I got three children grow up in English from, from grade R everywhere. So I have to struggle to get them in the English school where they have to uh, suffer and I have to battle with money to pay at that school because the school fees is so expensive because there's no government schools who are in English in, in our areas. There's only few classes like from grade eight to grade 12 only one of two classes, but Afrikaans is a lot. But you say in South Africa, our language, in even in your in section uh, six, you're talking about a language uh, uh, in X, uh, 1984, uh, just want to see here, uh, you say here in uh, uh, X84, 90 of 96, you speak about the language. And I, I know actually the language in South Africa, English is the most best communication language in South Africa. And even if your children go to in the universities, all the tests, all the things they have to do is in English. They don't do it in Afrikaans, but they got so much Afrikaans schools in, in South Africa, but they don't have enough English schools for our children. Even like you, even like the children, you get people who got children who got first language, which is English, but they don't open English schools. So I was, will say thank you. I hope you will look to this, what I'm saying here today, because uh, that, is, that is a struggle. And even the, cho the teachers who are in the English schools who are teaching English, they are not even English, they are Afrikaans. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Uh, thank you very much, my chair. Thank you very much for this um, wonderful opportunity to give me this time to, to, to address this issue. But uh, I will speak as a cause. Chepesin, these are we support I'm 110 percent. Up I'm not born the opportunity or any job creation. Ah, uh, how many is our Asha abandon about the fund is our great art. I am na e job creation because kaloko baza benefit a kui msege lo kui profit and funds baza benefit a kui 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 pension funds baza benefit a kui ndwezi nins lendo ye homeschooling is a is a benefit a i la luka i manurit but is a safari sha i manurit le idea ni zena yo pagati kui tu ndo banga bana ni funa u recognize. It is a great are yona is a benefit a majority a less fortunate. If we go statistics, sabanda ba unemployed in South Africa the majority. So if ever when the girl no banga bana my pass, as I tell no banga bana, ni implement as soon as possible, because as a young um, young people we 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 recognize we siboni le no banga bana. The NGOs they are overtaker. Because government is a service, for support 100% in the government. Thank you very much. Thank you. Interpreter. I, in short, support the system of the great R employment to be done. It will assist because there will be pension funds applicable and there will be minority benefits will be considered because previously we had an occasion where the majority had to suffer. Therefore, the great R system will support the majority. I submit that this system be implemented 
as soon as possible because the NGOs exceeded the government inputs in the previous year. Therefore, I am supporting the implementation and I support also the bill. I support the bill by 110%. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, good evening. Uh, sorry, this is my reading glasses. So I'm going to be wearing these dark glasses. Honorable Chair, Honorable Members and Participants, my name is Daniel Visser, and I oppose the Bella Bill in its entirety, specifically Section 37 and 41. Be not fooled, the devil is in the detail, and this bill is full of it. Please note that passing a bill due to the shortcomings of the justice system will not suffice. We need justice for the poorest of the poor people in South Africa. We are not seeing this happening. Once we can start to establish justice for the poorest people in this country, we can start to lift them up and build up society. We need to see this for our children as well. We are not supposed to be talking about abortion and these type of services when it's coming to schooling. We need to support our children and protect our children when it comes to these matters. There shouldn't be such cases at all. So these services are definitely not welcome in a school world. For pornography, if you guys want to be licensing something or governing something, add it into the bill that no person would, should legally be able to access pornography if they don't have a license. People without licenses should not be able to access these types of material. Language. When my brothers and sisters here of another colors are standing around and they don't have schools that are supporting them in their languages, this is due to the economic failures of our government. Our government needs to be building more schools. There needs to be a serious effort from government to stand up, prioritize economics before racial issues, build up the country, and lift up the people. Regarding the member of SACTU, which uh, we're complaining about the homeschooling members and saying, these people can afford it. They can afford to be here. I think the homeschooling people maybe just got their priorities right. They are here because they've got their priorities right. But also, we are not pulling on a rope. We are not pulling a rope. We want the same thing. We want proper education for our system. If you decide to do it at home, or whether you decide to do it in a system governed specifically by the government, let it be done. Unfortunately, your time has expired, Robert. Next. That's cool. My name is Sharon Porter, and I reject this bill in its entirety in that I can see a forked tongue sticking out of it, spewing fire and brimstone at every turn while promising to save our children from its burn. And I think the alcohol clause where you want to drink alcohol in front of our children and then um, expel them for, doing, for following your lead, okay? Plus, I see that this is just a small piece in a bigger agenda, Agenda 21, and that freight train has already begun. State institutionalized, states institutionalized its education is an ex exact example of that. And then, in your, your honorable members, in your honor, would you like to be the mother who notices her daughter sobbing herself to sleep? And when you ask her what's wrong, she says, nothing, mom, even though her mind and body are screaming in agony and blood is dripping from between her legs because she has just undergone an abortion without parental consent. I say, not under my watch. We both know a child so young has been groomed into this situation. It infuriates me, point blank. No, not to worry, 
I know you say we have a course in our CAPS, CAPS curriculum to deal with this eventuality that is bordering on pornography. I would like to see what is in that curriculum. It infuriates me to see what you are doing to our children. It is raping their minds. Thank you. And then I know you say to me, well, not your problem. Should your children fall pregnant? We have because they have followed through with our instruction based on what you have taught them in the curriculum. You provide our children with birth control pills without parental consent. Then my reason for being here, I've had the privilege of homeschooling my son, he's now 15. Thank God he's out of your jurisdiction. He was institutionalized in your school. And from the moment he entered into your school, he, I was told that he was the worst child, my son, that have ever come across. Not because he was naughty, but because he was unable to sit still. I had to drug my child to stay in your institution. My child was in and out of hospital because of asthmatic attacks, because of the stress that he endured. He begged me on a daily basis, mommy, please give me a video camera so I can show you what these teachers are doing to me. Eventually, I was called into the school. The teachers looked at me and said to me, what are you doing here? Unfortunately, that time of yours is up. No, 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 you will say it the other day. Thank you. Next. You can come this side and whisper to what now. Next. No, 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 no. We heard you. Thank you, Mama. No, don't be, don't be very explosive. You will best. Thank you. Next. Good day, honorable members and, and honorable chair. My name is Hayley White, mother of two beautiful God-given children. I reject the billable, specifically clause 37. I do not for one minute believe that any other person other than myself and my husband knows or cares for my children's best interest. I have been maternally and spiritually tasked with the honor and great responsibility to care for my family by means of feeding them, caring for them, creating a safe home for them, clothing them, encouraging them, loving them, and above all, teaching them that as commanded by our, God, our Father God, none of which is anyone else's responsibility. I was blessed with these beautiful children given to me by my Heavenly Father, from conception to pregnancy, to birthing to nursing, from raising baby to toddler, from toddler to preschooler, to this very point in their very important lives. This task should not change for a mother just because the state feels that we have done enough, for our, in, we have done enough of our God-given duty to raise our children. These are the most crucial days of our lives as parents. And as long as I have life in me, I will continue to teach my children what I can. I have taught my children everything they know, right from their first moments on earth to this very delicate life they leave right, lead right now. Handing over this huge responsibility would not only be irresponsible, but heartless and cruel, not only for my children, but also for me as a parent, as a mother. For this child I have prayed, and the Lord has given me my petition, which I asked of him. Never before has the state been involved in the responsibility of the life of my children. So why now? Why should freedom of curriculum not be our choice and right as parents? Not all children fit into one curriculum type. Just as our family has strong faith belief system, which has long been limited or missing from our South African school system. So we have chosen a classical Christian education curriculum. Therefore, assessing our children by CAPS regulation is unreasonable. Keeping in line with unreasonable, I believe that home visits are of the utmost violation of privacy and home safety. My home is a safe place for each member of our family, and we wish to keep it that way. If we would like you in our home, we would invite you into our home, not the other way around. This home visit thing is a safety risk, and it cannot be controlled or monitored by the government, with scammers and crooks on the prowl permanently. 
by me not forcing my children into the already overcrowded public school system makes room for other children. I am, in fact, benefiting the state by saving the state thousands of rands by not placing my children in a public school. The beauty of homeschooling is that you can learn in whichever language you prefer. Homeschooling, yes, is a privilege, but not a costly one. I earn absolutely no Unfortunately, income. Unfortunately, Mama, your time has expired. Colleagues, by virtue of all powers given to me by the chairperson of the portfolio committee to wrap up on this, let me say the following. This is the beauty of our democracy. Before anything gets amended, we go back to the people in what we call participatory democracy. You have come from close and afar. You have given your contributions. You are, as we are speaking now, the seventh province we are visiting. We'll be in the Western Cape today, tomorrow on Saturday, and on Sunday. The other two subsequent weeks, we will be saying, ah, we have spoken. There is no need to demonstrate. You have spoken. What is more important is what you said. From here, we will be going to the Northern Cape. And we are going to wrap up in the Eastern Cape. So we want to thank you for having come in your rank and files and having agreed to come and air your views. We say thank you, and thank you so much. But at the end of the whole process, the entire report will be brought to the, this all-important portfolio committee. We will take the report to parliament after having adopted it. Parliament will scrutinize and decide on the final product. And surely the final product after it shall have gone to the council for provinces, you will know about the outcome. It is not just a lip service. All we can tell you is thank you and thank you. You see, in parliament, there are rules uh, when the chair is on the podium, Baba, uh, you see, have you seen some, okay, let me say something. In this parliament today here, we have got uh, parliamentary security services. People who behave like this, sometimes they will be howled outside. This is a parliament in session. So, colleagues, let us indicate that this session has come to its logical conclusion and the bon voyage, you are now on your own. But this kind of behavior, you must uh, make it a point that it doesn't repeat itself. Thank you very much.